We want to welcome everyone to this uh, place of worship that meant so much to Alba and, uh, and to you too as we come to worship God here and to remember the dear lady who has touched all of our lives. So I'm sure on behalf of the family I can say thank you uh, for your presence here and we worship, we will sense also, I'm sure, the presence of God as we uh, thank God for the gift that she was to all of us. In the scriptures we read these words, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting thou art God. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall she live. Whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? He asked. And then these words from Paul I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. Christ Jesus, our Lord. Let us pray to him. Lord, we do thank you for all this life. We thank you for this place of worship, which meant so much to her and her family. And as we worship you here today, we do pray that you would help us to honor her and to be aware of your presence. We ask you to comfort all who mourn today. Give them, we ask, the peace that comes to us through Jesus, and through the shed blood on the cross for us. Thank you for this gift of eternal life. It means so much to Alva now. And we thank you for the prayer that Jesus taught us to say together. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. favorite hymns, and maybe one of yours as well, is What a Friend We Have in Jesus. It's in our hymnary, and it's also in our bulletin. In the hymnary, it's number 664.
share with us today in music as well as in spoken word. I just talking to Donna, who's going to be the first, and she uh, mentioned that the scripture reading that she chose is the very same as I did, except for about three verses. So uh, I'm going to start by reading uh, those first three or four verses, which we must uh, have agreed on, help to describe Elva's life. Life of a good wife and good mother, as the writer of Proverbs <coughs> indicates. A good wife who can find, she is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands. The needy. So at this time, uh, Pam is going to continue to, to celebrate uh, all his life, and we'll just uh, go in the order. She would just come up in the order as is in the bulletin. So that would be great. Thank you so much. relationship set the standard for us all. I find it hard to believe that there isn't a person in Grandma's sphere of influence, sisters and their, and their families, pray children and their spouses, her 24 grandchildren, through to her 50 great-grandchildren, and right down to her 11 great-great-grandchildren, who haven't felt the effects of Grandma's warmth her concern, love, and keen interest. I smile as I think of the birthday cards that Graham so carefully selected for us and insisted that they be mailed in time to reach us for our birthdays. Graham enjoyed having her family come to visit, and although the house in Norfolk was small, it was amazing how many could gather around the kitchen table. Graham was always prepared for those gatherings, with games for us kids like trouble and Chinese checkers, and items like dolls, dishes, and little furniture necessary to play house under the stairs. Grandpa was always the center of attention during these events, with Grandma, the gracious hostess, as she pre presented us with coffee and one of her baked delicacies, while tales of the farm were recounted to entertain us. You are not a Scot if you do not drink coffee. It was a rite of passage when Grandma served you your first half cup of coffee. She completed her duty as hostess by seeing you off with a wave from her front window until you were out of sight. Grandma valued her relationships she forged with her neighbors, and I'm sure was the pilot project for the Neighborhood Watch program she monitored the activity in her subdivision. She could report on the traffic in and out of the subdivision, whose children were playing, playing what and with whom outside after school, and who in the neighborhood had made improvements to their lawns. Her lawn and gardens were her pride and joy. Grandma was clearly a perfectionist. 
There wasn't a dead room or uneven blade of grass to be found. In fact, on the odd occasion when Grandma conceded she needed help cutting her lawn, you were allowed to cut it, but only under supervision. In that one opportunity, you either pass or fail. Sadly, I failed and was never given the privilege again. A few persistent weeds and brown patches could lay, lead to her entire lawn being removed and new sod being laid down. She sets the bar high as she was a woman with impeccable style, always a lady. She was fussy, not only with her lawn, but also with her grooming and her housekeeping. I'm not sure she was ever completely satisfied with any alterations done to to her clothes, even though no one else could tell. She always took great care in the way she dressed and accessorized. She was no different when it came to decorating her home. She agonized over colors of paint and matching border, which often required multiple trips to Peterborough to get just the right look. She always maintained such a neat and orderly home, however. Oh, home. However, it became a bit of a challenge to keep up with her. If she asked you to change a light bulb, you'd better get on it, where it was likely that you would find that feisty senior citizen on a stool doing it herself. The same could be said for shoveling the driveway or washing windows. Independent, impatient, just a little. Grandma loved all of her family, but seized every opportunity she could to torment us with a little devilish twinkle in her eye and a grin. She delighted in teasing us. Poor Uncle Wilma was mortified as Grandma threatened with the milkers on day of pause. <laughs> she got a hold of Dad's girlfriend's ring, forcing him to wrestle it from her grip. On visiting her at the nursing home, before she even acknowledged me, she asked me when I was getting married with a grin. However, it was Uncle Randy's job to make her laugh. We all loved to hear her laugh, but our other children all have their roles in caring for Grandma. She was an amazing lady in every sense of the word. She has been an inspiration and a great role model for me. I attribute who I am today in part to Grandma, and it's my desire to follow in her footsteps and pass on her legacy to my own family. In closing, I think this passage very aptly describes Grandma. Also Proverbs 31, 25 to 31. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is bleeding. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the reward, reward she has earned, and let her works earn her praise.
My name is Bev, and I'm the wife of Jordy, who's the second eldest of the Scott family. Uh, and this is one of my beautiful granddaughters who said she'd finish for me if I couldn't finish this. Uh, I first met all of Scott early in 1956 when I was taken home to the farm to formally meet the Scott clan, who would obviously become my future in-laws. We were going to an oyster supper back at Wellness Corners. That was a real stretch for me because I hated oysters. <laughs> Two things really stick in my memory from that wonderful <coughs> evening. The first is that I was received and, and with such warm, welcome arms, open arms. And the second one, uh, the, the youngest one there at the time was Randy, the baby. He was about two and a half at that time, and quite a little character. I suspected he was just a tad spoiled, and uh, however, without much ado, he allowed me, a total stranger, to dress and get him ready for the evening. We got along very well, and the 
before the evening was finished, I knew that I was in. All jokes aside, Randy, I would like to think that you and I have been great friends ever since. Uh, Elva Scott is a very hardworking, uh, caring, giving, loving, and beautiful soul, both inside and out. She adhered to her, her Christian principles and strict moral code, for which she made no apologies. <laughs> All of you, Randy, Janet, Jim, Rayburn, Gail, Ina, Jordy, and Moment, have been very blessed to share your lives with this remarkable lady and mother, and I pray you all will share with us. I, too, and my family have also been blessed to share much with her and you, great family gatherings, births with many beautiful grandchildren and children, many triumphs, tragedies, and much more. I would have to say that I am most proud of something never ever shared, and that was a cross or unkind word. For this I am eternally grateful. In bidding farewell, I love you, Lovell Scott. May God bless and keep you in the hollow of his hand, and I pray that he has a special place for you in heaven because you certainly deserve it. Thank you. With love and respect, happy God. This is um, a special honor for me that I should honestly thank my grandmother for, but my aunts and uncles for accommodating me up here today. It's a special time. Um, there's a sweet irony in this tune also that, uh, that it was also the favorite song of my Aunt Faye, her sister, and I was honored to uh, sing that at Aunt Faye's funeral some time ago. So. Kind of fitting that uh, two sisters like the same song, so kind of very fitting. Um, lots of great words spoken here today, and I'll let the song do the talking because she loved it so much. But I do have to say that, uh, like uh, like cousin Donna, she she shaped who I am, and uh, maybe I should just say um, she she shaped uh, who my kids are, and uh, she will shape their kids, and and that's I guess the the definition of a, a legacy, isn't it? And um, she taught me many of life's great qualities and some of the lesser ones like how to play checkers and cribbage that nobody at home will play with me anymore. But anyways, grandma taught me. And uh, I guess what struck me, if I, just one more thought before I sing this great song, is that um, she had a special quality of, of always making you feel, uh, her sister actually shared this as well, that, that, you know, to admit to all of you today that sometimes maybe I thought I was the favorite and you could fool yourself for a while, but then when I, I was there at last night at the funeral home and I see all my cousins, I realized that was really her endearing quality, that she could make everybody feel like just for at least that moment that they, maybe they were a special one at the moment. And uh, I see a lot of nodding heads that understand what she's saying.
and time for me will be no more. Guide me gently, sweetly, oh, to thy shore, to thy shore. There was always good conversation, lots of stories from the days gone by. She was always interested in hearing about what was going on in your life, and she had a special talent for listening. It was a place she never wanted to leave. Just ask Mom and Dad how many times I literally cried and begged to stay at Grandma's house. Grandma was there to give me my first cup of coffee my first taste of maple syrup, to rescue me from school when I got my tongue stuck on the frosty swing chain, <laughs> <laughs> to get me out of trouble with Dad when he sent me to bed without my supper, <laughs> to care for me when I needed that extra little hug, or to give me encouragement when I felt like the chips were down. You never left Grandma's hungry or wanting anything except some more of her company. I have every birthday card she sent me saved in a special place, as does our daughter, Julia, because those cards were a special connection to Grandma alone, something special to look forward to on every birthday. There are people who think that cards are a waste of money, but not me. The act of giving a greeting card is something special instilled in me by Grandma. In our lives, there are always those who inspire us. They are constant, that remains in our thoughts to influence the way we live and think. Grandma was one of the most influential persons in my life, a role model to live up to and to learn from. 
I try in my everyday life to work hard and love well and be there for my children and my grandchildren to carry on the legacy of love and encouragement that Grandma passed on to her children to be passed on to all generations to come. So today our hearts may be heavy, but think of her smile that glowed and lit up the room. Think of her and Grandpa smiling down on us now from their place together in heaven. Remember that all-encompassing love from someone so special that will be remembered always and forever. In the words of Father Keller, what we have once enjoyed, we can never lose. All that we love becomes a part of us. to each of you, Donna, Robin, Beth, George, and Susan, for sharing so beautifully about your mother, such a beautiful woman, as someone said, on the inside and the outside. I'm sure many of you, if you had opportunity, could be up there, too, sharing. So it's a real privilege, isn't it, for us to be together and reflect on just what it means to be a woman like Alba. Many of you may know that she was one of three Andrews sisters, which also included Faye and Irma. And uh, I believe they went to school not far from here. Alba was married at the young age of 17 to Clarence, and they moved on to the family farm. And as has been said, they, they really loved each other. And Sherry was telling me that uh, her grandpa Clarence uh, always put Alba on a pedestal where she was respected. It was during uh, the post-depression times, however, that they were married and they had many challenges to face. And as, been, as has been said, such a hard-working woman, raising eight children, carrying water, doing housework, cooking for thrashers, all that life on the farm entailed in those difficult days. As time went on, she also nursed her mother-in-law and father-in-law with love and care. She had a great deal on her platter, as you can see, but she wasn't a woman to complain. And that's how I knew her as well. Alvin Clarence's home was also, as has been said, where the family and others would congregate. And that, of course, meant a lot of extra cooking and a, a lot of serving, and I too can testify her to her good cooking. She kept things neat and tidy and coordinated, and I understand that that included her children. And I'm sure she'd be proud of you today. I know that you never wanted to disappoint her. Grandchildren as well, and great-grandchildren. After 36 years on the farm, Alvin and Clarence moved to what they saw as their dream home in Norwood. They enjoyed seniors' dances with other retired farmers and a number of happy years together there. But life, of course, changed when Clarence died. I believe it was in 1985. And, uh, but Alva continued her life with her faith and strong spirit. Such a strong woman as has been said. My memories of Alva started about 21 years ago. It's hard to believe it's that long. In 1992, when I became her pastor in Norway, I soon discovered a friendly person who played her full part in the life of the congregation there and always made people welcome in her home. Later years, around 2008, Elva moved into McRig Lodge in Canton. She had struggled with health issues, which made it hard for her to stay in her home. In the lodge, she made a point to know the names of all the staff. And probably she had more visitors there than anyone else. In 
Norwich, she had sometimes invited me over for supper before we went to Bible study and prayer time on Wednesday or was it Thursday evenings. And uh, she learned that I was allergic to peas. Not anymore. Maybe it's because of her good cooking. I don't know. But uh, in any case, she mentioned that uh, just uh, about a month ago to me when I visited her in the in the lodge in Canton, that she had tried to feed me peas, by mistake, of course. And we both had a good chuckle. As I was leaving her bedside on April 27th, she said, come anytime. You're, you're as welcome as the flowers in May. That was probably one of her beautiful expressions that she probably may have said to a number of you as well. And as I was thinking about what to say today, I, I thought of those last words that I heard from her. Not because of what it might say of me, but because of what it said about her. As her sons and, and George Jr. just uh, mentioned, she had a way, and I think that's echoed in what everyone said, she had a way of making people feel special. That's a special gift. It truly is. When it comes to flowers in May, she was one of the special flowers in God's garden. She was born on May 1st and died on May 27th. And here we are on this last day of May saying goodbye to her for a little while at least. It will soon be June, and it already feels today a little like summer. But perhaps the, the rose on our bulletin cover today <coughs> might remind you how this lady made you feel special. And all the while, you were learning how special she was. I'm sorry if not everyone got a bulletin in a hundred things. Especially, I hope perhaps the family will eventually get one. But uh, on that bullet, it says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. The words of God in Jeremiah. And a rose that might stand for all his life. She had faith in Jesus who loved her and made her feel special, and makes everyone who turns to him feel special. He took time to visit with the woman at the well, the blind beggar near Jericho, the leper who was shunned by others. He took time to pause and teach us about birds and flowers, about priorities in human life. One day in the countryside, perhaps not too different from the surroundings here today, said in Matthew 6, you cannot serve God and wealth. Look at the birds of the air. Your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. Therefore, do not be anxious. Seek first his kingdom. The words of Jesus. Jesus teaches us about what is of value, what is special. Elva knew what was of value. She knew that she knew as Jesus taught that people were of value, her family and her friends. She also knew that her faith was of great value. Her relationships with people, her relationships with God. While I visited with her in Canada, we had a little prayer together. I 
looked into her eyes. I saw that we were reaching through to her soul. The place where she knew God. brought her safe thus far, and he would lead her home. When Colonel John Glenwood came back to Earth from a triple orbit around the world, someone asked him about his fear of death on his journey. He replied, many years ago, I made my peace with God. And therefore, I was not afraid. And so there comes a point in our lives when our apparent self-sufficiency loses its force in relation to God's all-sufficiency. It's at the foot of the cross where Jesus died for us that people come and find more meaningful life and hope. We come and we find, as the scripture says, that Jesus has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. He was pierced for our transgressions. And by his wounds, we are healed. person who was dying was asked about passing through the valley of the shadow of death. And she said, I don't see any valley. I see only Jesus. Elba has passed through that valley and is with Jesus. Family, friends, faith, all making a flower, a beautiful flower in God's garden. Let's pray together. Thank you, Jesus, for being with Elva all through her life. For the gentle, strong woman she was, but she trusted in you. And as she served her family. Thank you that each one was special to her, and she loved each one. As we learn from her example today, we thank you we are better and richer people for having known this dear lady. Thank you that you continue to work in our lives through the people we meet day by day and you can touch other lives through us as well. Through the strength that comes from you. And so for the faith and the hope and the love that Jesus offers us, we give you thanks today. We thank you for his sacrificial death on the cross for our sins and the hope of life beyond the grave. We come today as people in need of your love and comfort at this time and at all times. May we accept your healing love and the strength of your spirit now. We pray these things in the strong name of Jesus. 